Welcome to a new Teen CGC 9.8 video. Today I want to go through some uh, 9.8 completed sales prices and talk about the comic book market. Uh, a lot of these prices I got from uh, Action Figure Graders video that he, he just did a couple days ago on 9.8 comics. I'll put a link in the description below and um, yeah, th that video really helped me make this video. But uh, you know what, in a lot of these keys in a 9.8 it kind of feels just like a slow death on some of these where um, Arguably, I think you can say some books have taken another leg down in price. Uh, so let's get into each one here and uh, we'll talk details as we get along. Uh, so the first one is a Punisher War Journal number six. This one is cooling down and it's just a really great one to consider right now. I actually saw one sell on eBay for a $95. Yeah, under a hundred buck uh, dollar sale on this one. The uh, pictures in the auction weren't very good, so I think this is absolutely going to be near the lower end of the fair value right now on a, a Punisher War Journal number six. But this is when um, Wolverine and Punisher first meet and fight. Uh, interesting, if you really, really like this one, uh, I saw a newsstand sell not too long ago for $309. So the newsstand gets a pretty big markup in this book. I think. You know, this is a great Jim Lee cover. I think Jim Lee fans and, and big Wolverine and Punisher fans really target that newsstand. And it is a late 80s book, so the newsstands are really desirable. So, uh, you know, newsstand around 300 if you really like this one. But the direct edition saw one go for uh, $95 in the uh, Punisher War Journal number 6 in the 9-8 white pages. Uh, next one's a really cool key is uh, Swamp Thing number 50. This is pretty much like the first full appearance of Justice League Dark, like the unofficial first full appearance of Justice League Dark. Yeah, in this one you kind of get John Constantine working with, you know, Dead Man and Spectre and, and Swamp Thing for kind of the first time pretty much. So a lot of people uh, go to this one for the first full appearance of Justice League Dark, let's call it. Uh, so I saw this one sell for $174.99. Yeah, that's a pretty solid price. I think that's money well spent on this one, especially if you're like a Swamp Thing fan or, you know, John Constantine, Justice League Dark fan. Yeah, Swamp Thing number 50. Um, you know, maybe this one is just cooling down right now. It's somewhat of a secondary key. Um, you know, maybe you could even aim closer to 150, which I think would be a great deal. But uh, one selling for 174.99. Uh, one we covered recently that I really like, an Uncanny X-Men 133. The uh, first solo Wolverine story saw a nice one sell. It was pretty great centering. Looked really good for a one thousand and twenty dollars. Uh, and we had documented a couple of these that had went in the one thousand three hundred level. So you know, if this one's taken another leg down to around a thousand, I feel like uh, you know, around a thousand, it, it's absolutely worth it. Yeah, this is a uh, one that Wolverine fans really target. This one looked really good too. I think that was a great buy at a one thousand and twenty for an X-Men 133. So I, yeah, that's pretty much a, a price target to aim for, I think, if you want this one. And uh, yeah, like I said recently, quite a few sales going around that 1,300 level or 1,250, kind of in that range. So a little bit of, a little bit of a cool down on that one. Uh, next one I do have, and I brought it out this morning, a Wolverine limited series, number one in a direct edition. One had sold for a $512, yeah. They, um, you know, I've been kind of seeing them 550, a little over 600. I don't think I've saw one go for 512 though. Like, you know, that's pretty close to 500, um, you know, in the last three months or so, I hadn't saw one go this low. So a uh, Wolverine limited series number one, it's not the best 9.8. There's a lot of them out there. It doesn't have the best ratio for an 80s comic, 1980s comic book in the 9.8 but uh, it is just a kind of a huge no-brainer key issue and uh, the closer it gets to 500 the kind of more tempting and better of a value it is even though it's, it maybe is not the best 9.8 um, so yeah I think if you want a Wolverine limited series right around $500 is a price target to aim for on that one uh, next big limited series but Punisher limited series number one in a 9.8 white page is looking pretty great, selling for $790. And the Punisher Limited Series 1 is a way better 9.8 on the census. There's way less of them than the Wolverine Limited Series 1. A better 9.8 percentage as well. Whoa, <laughs> hey kitty. Uh, so um, I think uh, Punisher Limited Series number 1 is absolutely worth 
more than than a Wolverine limited series number one. And I think, yeah, 790, really solid price on that one. I think uh, that's pretty much a price target to aim for on the uh, Punisher limited series number one, selling for 790 in uh, nine, eight white pages. Uh, so a uh, ultimate follow four in the variant edition sold in a nine, eight, kind of one to just keep an eye on for entertainment purposes for me. Uh, pretty much out of my budget range, but uh, one is sold for 19250 And that's basically the same price that one had sold like maybe a month ago on these Comic Link auctions as well. So they're going right around that, uh, you know, 19250 let's call it. Um, and uh, if you do want that one, that's probably the kind of price to aim for. Uh, so... Um, Next one is uh, an Amazing Spider-Man 238. Yeah, this is one I do have, and this one seems to be taking a, a little bit of a leg down and cooling down a bit as well. Just in time for Halloween, which is kind of funny. Oh, my, my cat is frisky right now. <laughs> um, Amazing Spider-Man 238 selling for $1,617. Yeah, and I think these were, you know, going a little bit under 2000 um, but 1,617, that's the lowest I've saw in a while. Yeah, I don't, I don't, you don't see too many of these sell all the time, but, uh, 1,617, if you want this one in the direct edition, I think it is a pretty much a price to aim for at this point. And, uh, the newsstand version sold as well, $2,211. And I think, you know, at one point, not too long ago, those newsstands were, you know, sort of definitely over 2,500. Uh, so 2,211, yeah, it does seem that uh, Amazing Spider-Man 238 is uh, just cooling down uh, in the short term here. Okay, next one is a uh, classic Darth Vader cover that is completely buyable right now, I think. It's a uh, Star Wars 39, the Empire Strikes Back adaptation. Uh, saw this one selling in direct edition for $145. Uh, so $145 is... Getting near the price that I had grabbed mine for in an auction, sort of um, somewhat near kind of the beginning of the pandemic. Um, yeah, 145 I think is a really good value on a Star Wars 39. One of the classic Darth Vader covers that, you know, you just kind of want. So uh, you could pretty much get in there, I think. Uh, anywhere under 145 I think would be a pretty great deal on a, on a great look in a Star Wars. Uh, 39 in a direct edition. This one was in. The newsstands are pretty targeted on that one as well. And they're, they're probably around 200 or so, I would say. Uh, next one is uh, New Mutants 98 in a 9.8 selling for a 1,250. That's about the level they've been going at recently. Uh, they cooled down probably in the last three to six months, I would say, from that you know 1,500 area. Um, most of the time they're pretty much going for 1250 right now. Maybe you get a, a little lower if you're lucky, just with things coming, uh, cooling down. Yeah, I think you could absolutely aim for kind of a below f or a, a, the lower end of a fair market value on a lot of these books right now, just how the, the comic book market's been recently. Uh, another cooling down price, uh, Incredible Hulk 340 in a direct edition. Uh, Hulk vs. Wolverine for the second time. Classic Todd McFarlane cover. Selling for $1,025. Yeah, we documented a couple of these that are were sort of in that $1,250 range recently. So $1,025. I think I did say on my last video, like if you can kind of get one of these around $1,000 uh, with things cooling down, that would be a pretty great buy. So I think uh, $1,025 is a great buy right now. And uh, yeah, kind of a price target to aim for. Yeah, maybe that even gets a lick under a thousand. I think that would be a great deal on a, a Hulk 340 in a 9.8. Uh, next one is a, a Daredevil 168. Yeah, this is a origin and first uh, first appearance of Elektra. Yeah, huge key. Oh yeah, my kitty is so frisky right now. <laughs> and uh, this one had sold for uh, two thousand. And $55. Yeah, I don't follow this one too much. Not the biggest Daredevil fan, although this um, Frank Miller Daredevil era is uh, very well collected. This is the biggest, pretty much the biggest key out of that era. And uh, I'm, I want to say this one was like, you know, well into the 2000s uh, very recently. So I think this one's kind of, you know, somewhat cooling down as well at uh, 2000 
and $55 this one's selling for. It looked pretty good in the scans too. Yeah, pretty solid copy. I think, um, you know, if you're a Daredevil fan, that's kind of the one to get in era. And that's, that's a great buy. Yeah, 2055 on a, a Daredevil 168 and a 9.8 white pages. Okay, uh, Batman New 52, number six, the next one. First full appearance of the Court of Owls. Um, this one selling for $290. And uh, that's where, about where they've been going recently. And I did mention um, uh, when we documented the last few that uh, this one's uh, kind of hanging in their book. Yeah, like uh, they've been right around 300 for the last six to 12 months. And even during the pandemic, they got up to, you know, maybe 400 or so. But, you know, for it just to take about a $100 haircut or so since the pandemic highs is, is a hanging in their book, I think. And uh, yeah, maybe there's a little bit of speculation that they're going to have the Court of Owls in the next The Batman 2 movie. But um, yeah, this just... It's a great book. Yeah, the interiors are amazing. It has this whole, like, um, the first kind of six issues of uh, the Batman New 52 has, has awesome interiors. But, uh, yeah, this one's hanging in there. Maybe you aim a kind of 275 or so instead of 290 if, if you want to get a deal on a Batman number six in a 9.8. And uh, last one here, a uh, Batman 635. First Jason Todd is Red Hood. Pretty cool modern Batman key. Cooling down, I think uh, this one ended up selling for $245. And I think I saw them recently go for like, I think one was like $215 or so. So $245, um, this one's selling for, I think uh, you could probably aim a little closer to $200 on that one if you want a, a Batman 635. But a pretty solid uh, modern Batman key issue. And I think this one's kind of a better value than, you know, some of those Damien keys right now because there's, a lot of those rumors about, you know, they're going to have Damien in, in that, uh, I think, uh, the, the new DCU movies or something like that. Those Damien keys seem to be a little bit heated up, whereas I think Batman 635 is a better key issue with a, you know, really cool cover that, um, you know, you can get more closer to a fair value, I think, right now. And I think closer to 200 is doable on a Batman uh, 635 right now. Okay, so yeah, you know what? The market, I think, is just um, really soft right now. Yeah, it's just, uh, especially, um, you know, I made uh, recent videos about X-Men 133 saying it's really hanging in there with the, you know, current prices around 1,300, but that one going for 1,020, that uh, seems to be uh, cooling down a little bit more. Hulk 340 cooling down a bit. Amazing Spider-Man 238, uh, yeah, first full appearance of Hobgoblin's a great 9.8, and that one's actually cooling down. Yeah, actually, that's that's a really good buy, I think, in the direct edition, 1,617 on Amazing Spider-Man 238. So, yeah, you know what? It's a buyer's market right now. Yeah, it's just uh, such a better time to buy than during the pandemic and everything like that. So, you know, um, try to get those big key issues that you really love and or think about those big key issues that you really love and, you know, right now is a pretty great time to try to get them at a solid fair value. Okay, uh, we'll leave it at that though, team. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.